Hey, all my burners out there, this is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How's all my burners doing out there today? In this crazy-ass time that we're living in, and undeniably challenging times, as individuals and businesses across the country are staying at home for who knows how long, uh, there's anxiety setting in with people, um, there's some real dangers with contracting novel coronavirus, or like what I like to call it, the C-19 there are some unclear economic ramifications with all different businesses, not only just the cannabis industry, but all different businesses right now. Where people's next paychecks are going to come from. Will there be a job for me on the other side of this when this is all over? As we've seen with the explosion of different industries, the cannabis industry, the craft beer industry, the beverage industry, many different industries and benefits of uh, what the small business owners bring to this country are enormous. Um, the creation of, of adult use medical and recreational cannabis industry uh, could create hundreds and hundreds of thousands of jobs and also be a total economic savior in the billions and billions of dollars in tax revenue and an income from small business owners. We, um, when you include uh, tourism in impact and on-premise operations, could have combined with the rise of manufactured hemp products uh, economic impact could easily double just like the craft beer industry did much in wealth was created would be in small business owners because don't ever forget small business owners employ half of this country and we need small business owners and the cannabis industry is a lot of small business owners we don't need just one billionaire making all the money we can cannabis industry can create million millionaires upon millionaires instead of just one giant conglomerate billionaire and in this time, I want to thank everybody from the medical field, truck drivers, sanitation workers, retail workers, uh, cannabis workers, everybody who's staying open right now, small business owners, restauranteurs. I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart putting your, yourself at risk right now with this trying time. So that's just a, a little thank you from Weedman420. But let's get to some positive stuff. I have a very special guest here today who I'm very excited about having first time on, and you've heard me mention her many and many a times on this podcast, Mrs. Weedman to join us today since we're all in lockdown heaven right now. So I get to have a very special guest. How are you doing, Mrs. Weedman? I am well. She's doing great. Well, she's going to join us today, but before we get started, we talk about her a little bit. We're going to get baked. You ready to smoke out of the Rick and Morty bong? Yeah. You, Mrs. Weedman. Thank you. Oh, that was a big hit. As Mrs. Weedman smokes, we are smoking some Sunshine OG by Verano. This is a very topped out, high, high THC. I failed. I gotta do it over. <laughs> Go ahead, just hit it again. Okay. Mrs. Weedman's not like, very experienced with the with the big Rick and Morty bong. We've she's been working at it, getting better and better. But this is, there you go. That's what we're talking about, Mrs. Weed Man. This is a 38% THC overall experience. It has a little bit of euphoric, mood uplifting, relaxed, um, creativity. Me and Mrs. Weed Man has been smoking this Sunshine OG all week. Mm -hmm. And I really, really like this. But it's not, don't overdo this strain. It's, it's three hits for me, and I'm pretty baked. Mrs. Weeman, what do you feel about this strain? You've been smoking it with me all week long. What do you think? I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> Sorry. She don't remember. No, I do remember. I do remember that it um, it makes you silly. Yeah. There's there's some good silliness it makes about you it. Makes creative, too, doesn't creative, it? Creative, silly. Yeah, it's good. It's like a good it. strain. We're just going to start Not with like uh, knock you on the floor kind of weed. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's a good hybrid. A good indica hybrid, but it's got a little uh, talkative factors to it, which I really like. I'm only going to start with one hit on this one. I think Mrs. Weedman's only going to start off with one hit on this one because I've done three, four, five hits of this, and it's kind of <laughs> whacked me out a little bit. So, But <laughs> Mrs. Weedman, we, we've talked about you making edibles for me a lot on this on this podcast. Let's talk about a little bit about some edible making here and give the give the listeners here what you do. Let's give them a basic recipe. Um, you make me... We call them crispy creepers, but rice crispy mm -hmm. treats. Let's talk about how, how you do a recipe, how you get started, what you do. 
Okay. Well, my favorite way to make Rice Krispie treats that are infused is starting with a homemade infused canna oil, a coconut oil. I feel like the nutty flavor of the coconut oil masks and complements the weed um, in a perfect way. It just brings out like a nutty natural flavor. It's kind of earthy, but not overkill. So we have a machine and we make our infused coconut oil and I would use the base. It's the basic Rice Krispie treat recipe on either the package of marshmallows or your package of Rice Krispies. Um, I do use frosted Rice Krispies. I feel like they stay crunchier because they're coated in a little bit of sugar. My favorite too, by the way, is frosted Rice Krispies. And Mr. Weed Man thinks there's never enough weed in the <laughs> crispy creepers. <laughs> so Very this true. last time I, um, I added a little extra and then I also did a little chocolate coating. So I used some semi-sweet chocolate and added a little of the infused oil to that when I melted it and did a good schmear across the top of the crispy creepers. It was a lovely schmear, by the way, because so. men schmear. And one important note on making Rice Krispie treats, I have gone back to the old school way of making them on the stovetop with a pot, and I think it just it's, it cranks. Instead it makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been saying that for so, a while. And, really I, and I tend to go heavy on the marshmallow part. Yeah. Because that makes them good. Yep. And they're goopity goppity good, as we like to say when we eat them. Why do you think using butter or what we've learned about using butter versus using uh, coconut oil? What is the difference? Do you? Remember? I just think it's the flavor. Flavor. And I think that we've found that um, you feel the high a little bit more uh, quickly when we use the coconut oil versus butter. And, and I, I don't know if it's the fat. I think it's yeah, because of the fat, the fat content. Yeah. Uh, coconut oil has like a 95% fat intake versus butter which is can only be 70 percent and 80 percent depending on look at you uh, i mm. learned from you wow. <laughs> <laughs> give, give the compliment right back but yes so there is a big of fat soluble in coconut oil which would hit your body faster than butter that's why we've turned to coconut oil with a lot of our recipes and we like using them here i but like the flavor too the profile is really good yep. the last batch of crispy creepers you made you made a uh, strawberry chocolate with I peanut did. butter didn't you and you would no, no 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 peanut butter i wouldn't you do that i did chocolate and chocolate. and the frosted rice krispies did you add peanut butter to it though i think you did. and i did a peanut butter powder That's, frosting and you added coconut with chocolate oil to all and coconut three oil. yeah you triple dosed it yeah but uh, i feel bad now because we're talking about all this and i can't give you a recipe because <laughs> it's, it's okay. all just in my head it's okay <laughs> we can always put it on our on our on our we'll website and stuff like that so but Mrs. Weedman is a phenomenal edible maker. She does a lot of good stuff, and she likes to trick you every once in a while and, and go one direction. When you're thinking she's going left, she'll zigzag right and add something different to it every time to kind of get the recipe better and better. So, But Mrs. Weedman, one th question I've got to ask you before we get into some of these articles we researched this week is, you smoke weed because? Um, well, I just enjoy it. Uh, on a social level, I like the, um, it just chills me out a little bit. I'm not overthinking the room. It's just like, boom, I'm in my own little world. I'm good with wherever I'm at, whoever I'm talking to. And I don't have that like whole FOMO thing happening. Like, oh, that corner of the party looks more fun. <laughs> I could just be with my little, my little set and we're having a good time. So it takes away a little inhibition, takes away a little anxiety. It's good. And then there's another reason why you like smoking it. I like it when I'm going to bed because I have a tendency at the end of the day to sit there and think about all of the what have shoulda, couldas, what ifs, what has been, oh darn, shit, what did I say <laughs> kind of stuff. I shouldn't have said this and I shouldn't have done that. Blah. And so yeah, all that garbage. Yeah. And if you just smoke a little bit, about a half hour before bed, you just unwind and it's like a light switch and it just shuts your brain up. <laughs> that's nice. It's good. That's that's a good, good sleep. A, yeah, and I don't I don't see you in any different when we smoke hybrid indicas indica hybrids at night. I see you more. You don't sit up and think. You're not. Right. Yeah. You yeah. get more relaxed just and you go chill. right to sleep, Boom. which is nice. Sometimes, like we've talked about, some indicas to me gets me staying up all night. Like I want to save the world kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But some some do and some don't. But I see Mrs. Wee Man at night. And then when you go out to shows, when we go out to shows and we watch music concerts and stuff like that, you like a good sativa, like mm -hmm. you like the uppity. Mm -hmm. Fun, dance, yeah. chill. Yeah. Nice. Yep. 
well, we know why you like weed now. Mm-hmm. And um, reading this crazy week we've been going to the last couple of weeks and, and marijuana has been deemed essential uh, to most of the states like milk or bread. And some states say yes, uh, most of them did. Um, I'm glad they made it essential because then I don't have to go to the black market. Most people mm-hmm. that have their med cards now don't have to go to the black market. I know recreational, some states stopped recreational. I have a list that I'll read off here in a minute. But let me ask you a question, Mrs. Weedman. Do you feel that cannabis is essential? Kind of like bread, milk, eggs, grocery store shopping, whatever. Do you feel it's essential? Well, um, what comes to my mind? Well, they consider alcohol essential. Mm-hmm. Isn't Good that call. right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think milk, eggs butter, you know, things that are going to provide nutrients and substance to your family, um, I would think those are considered essential. Medical, health care, these kind of things. But it, it's kind of a, a broad spectrum, and so, yes, marijuana, back to that. Um, do I think it should be essential? Heck yeah. People have used it for centuries to help them feel better in many ways. Um, so I... I see it as being equally essential to any medication or any other source of um, enjoyment. Great. It's, I mean, if you, if you call a prescription drugs essential, like someone having to go yeah. with their, yeah. their painkillers or anything like that, cannabis mm-hmm. should be mm-hmm. deemed essential. Sure. Gas for your car, urgent medical care, uh, grocery stores like we talked about, and, and marijuana made the list. Cannabis made the list, which was great. I mean, I'm glad they didn't close the pot shops around the country, especially for medical Um Let's read off some states here, though, mm-hmm. and what they're doing. We'll give you some. We'll give you some. If you don't know already in your own state what's going on, California was was named essential uh, for for medical, which is great. Colorado. Here's the crazy thing about Colorado: uh, it was last week, and they deemed it unessential alcohol and cannabis, and like there was like six sure. hour waits and the lines were around the corner for both alcohol. And cannabis, and the mayor of Colorado changed his stance and went, okay, it's deemed essential, and then went back to regular business. They're doing a lot of curbside uh, delivery and stuff in Colorado because you could do that. You could deliver in Colorado, which is great. So they're trying to keep it safe. You order, you pay, they drop it off at your front door, which is good. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for Chicago yeah. to do that. That's going to be amazing. Connecticut, they mm-hmm. deemed it uh, medical cannabis business essential, which is great. Florida, um, state surgeon general issued an order allowing physicians to issue medical cannabis um restifications to existing patients but not new ones so just basically whoever has your card you're good illinois proud of you illinois you deemed it essential for everybody for medical thank you and all dispensaries and cultivators got to stay open and produce cannabis thank you pritzker and everything you did for the medical cannabis industry also letting us keep our cards if your cards were coming up they actually issued them till september or to the end of the year which is awesome so i'll get to not have to worry about my medical card it's due up in may they're just going to issue another one, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Good job, Illinois. Maryland, uh, cannabis growers, processors, and dispensaries are exempt from order from Larry Hogan, the, the governor, issued to close non-essential businesses. Regulars are now allowing dispensaries to deliver medical marijuana to patients in parking lots. Kind of cool. Massachusetts was kind of crazy. They were all over the fucking place when I was reading. Uh, recreational is me- deemed not essential, but uh, c- uh, medical is which is great. Michigan, uh, businesses will be able to continue curbside sales and home deliveries. Awesome. Michigan, New Hampshire, regulators are allowing medical cannabis patients to do curbside pickup. Jersey, 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 Jersey. Jersey. exempted medical cannabis dispensaries from a a stay at home order. Regulators move to allow patients pick up medical marijuana dispensaries. Great. New Mexico, medical cannabis businesses are essential and can stay open. Awesome. New York, uh, uh, the Department of Health deemed the medical cannabis providers as essential businesses subject to general closure order. Okay. Ohio, uh, at home order exempts medical cannabis business from broader businesses shuts down. Cool. Oregon, they're all, they're fucking, stay open. Everybody in Oregon is happy, <laughs> smiling. Pennsylvania, it's deemed essential. Order to close businesses in general. Um, uh, they also took other steps, including allowing patients to have marijuana brought to their cars outside. Cool. Washington State, they're wide open. Uh, we talked to Polly out there. He goes, they're wide open. He actually went shopping yesterday, so which was dope. Uh, Nevada, 
crazy shit. I mean, the regulators are, are mandating that all sales be done via IA delivery, effectively shuttering businesses that only have storefront operations. It hurt them a lot there. And despite the accommodations, many regulators are also directing businesses to implement social distancing measures on that. Did you say Nevada? Nevada. Nevada? Nevada. Nevada. Not Nevada. Nevada. Not Nevada? Nevada. Nevada. Nevada? Nevada? You've been there. You went to Planet 13 out there, didn't you? I've been you like to Nevada. That? You've been to Las Vegas. Nevada? <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> uh, now, here's the question, and I'm going to ask Mrs. Weedman this question. Hmm. There's a lot of federal relief out there for a lot of businesses. The marijuana industry is not eligible, eligible, or they are ineligible for coronavirus coronavirus disaster relief. Why? Because they are, cannabis is still federally illegal. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing: Do you think that cannabis companies should be able to get federal aid, even though they're not, even though cannabis isn't federally legal in the United States? They are mm -hmm. deemed essential. Medically, well, right? And all those states I just mentioned. Yeah, couldn't they pass a bill, like a temporary bill? They could, but they just passed that $2 trillion. Well, they should have thought about cannabis it. Cannabis wasn't even in there. Not hmm. even a thought. Hmm. So with a lot of these recreational cannabis companies that are maybe closed right now, because mm -hmm. there's no rec in that right. state, they might lose their business. Yeah. So is that fair that the business next door can get a loan? Of up to there should be some sort of of help up to ten million dollars, right? From we read yeah. a small business owner can get up to ten million dollar low interest loan. We read that, and I think cannabis should be deemed able to get help from mm -hmm. the federal government. It's yeah. a small business. Now, here I'll read a little bit from this article. The federal small the federal small business administration reiterated on Monday that marijuana companies are not eligible for disaster relief loans to lessen the blow of the coronavirus outbreak. Because cannabis remains illegal at the federal level, hmm. the marijuana industry is big, being denied access to these aid opportunities, including programs administered by the SBA. So the agency's Northwest branch confirmed that in response to a tweet from the cannabis business owner who inquired about an eligibility. So basically, we're, they're not going to get any help. I am, I am not in agreement with the federal government on this. If you're deemed a small business, whether you sell cannabis, whether you sell alcohol, whether you're a pharmacy, whether you're a grocery store, whether you're a shoe store, whatever, you're still part of the, you still have to do, pay your taxes, you still put into it, you should get help. So federal government, fix your shit on cannabis. I've been saying it for a while. Mrs. Weedman baked, I can tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm waiting to say something. Oh, okay. So... Illinois temporarily allows curbside weed. How do you feel about that? That's fantastic. Because we went to the dispensary a couple weeks ago. We went in. Mm -hmm. We went in. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me your experience. Well, that was the first time you were in there a while. You're my caretaker. Yep. This is Weed Man's my caretaker. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time you've been there in a while. Yep. You went in, and what was the experience like? Well, first and foremost, because of the time that we're in right now, we had our temperature taken when they took our license and ID. Um, they verified that the same way they had the last time I had been there. Um, but the temperature taking was interesting. Uh, there was hand sanitizer everywhere. And then when you walk through the double doors, um, it has become more of a formal, um, very, uh, much more efficiently operated endeavor. Uh, the menus are up on the board, like when you go out for fast food, and there's uh, line tape everywhere, so you know where the line starts. There's no more jewelry case displays. It's basically a menu board and an agent um, that is going to help you figure out the items that you want and ring you up. So it's changed. Yeah. Yeah. But I like the idea. And when we were there, they were really, uh, they had like lines on the floor of where you should be standing, you know, so that you're six feet apart from everybody. They were only allowing a few people in at a time. Yep. Um, but curbside delivery is pretty cool because although the... Uh, no recreational use, everybody just, right, you know, just this is just for medical. medical. Um, I still feel bad for all the, the employees that are having to work through all of this because they have to just constantly be exposed to people that 
they are unsure of. Um, but as the customer, it's very nice. And, assure, you know, I think it makes people more willing to go out and get what they need because they know they don't have to get out of their car. Yeah, I think it was exposed. great. I, mm -hmm. I did not ask if they were doing curbside mm -hmm. at, at uh, THC Medical Center, Herbal Care mm -hmm. Center. I didn't ask uh, because I just I like going in there and saying hello and stuff like that. So, But now that I know... If I am downtown and I'm heading back home, I can call and gra see if they'll dr drop mm -hmm. it off. I know they do online ordering, but I'm going to call and see if they'll leave a curbside. I think it's pretty cool. Um, the one thing about it is, though, you still have to pay them cash. So yeah. I wonder if they come out with the receipt because they don't have a credit card machine yeah. there that I know of. I never asked. They don't. They don't I know they don't take credit cards in, uh, yet. So, uh, But you still have to have cash in your pocket, so it's kind of weird. You have to work up a curb mm -hmm. side. Hopefully they have security watching, or maybe the security guard brings it out kind of cool well anyway i think that's great illinois nice job on making sure that the cannabis users and medically need to get their medicine any way possible um here's another thing uh what happens if your state runs out of cannabis because the cultivators aren't going in the work hmm. because of the, the the c19 virus that's out there and you can't federally now we can't cross state lines like say if california has an over excess and they can ship it to illinois that might be short would this be a good time for the federal government to allow it to happen during this period i think it's a great idea but if federally we can't cross state lines you don't think so why not well we just can't you can't cross state lines but do you think it's a good idea if the federal government steps in and say during this time of need right. if a state runs out of cannabis California or Colorado or Washington can ship some to the Midwest or to the East Coast. I think it would be a great idea. Yeah, I just don't see it happening. No, because they already passed a $2.1 trillion bill, so it's already off the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, But it would be a good idea. Here's why I'm so glad Mrs. Weedman is on this podcast. We were talking about this for the last couple of days. Now, I've been smoking cannabis for a long time. You know, Mrs. Weedman has not. So, and here's why. We have two small weed children. We did, and now they're grown-ups. But during the time... <laughs> you like small that? weed children? We did have weed, small <laughs> weed children. Weed daughter and a weed son. Yes. You didn't smoke cannabis back when they were younger. I did. We had our little thing. I smoked it out in the car and away from the kids. But you were a mom who didn't really understand the use of cannabis back then. You've learned over the last 10 years what cannabis is all about, which has been great. How do you break the sticky stigma with mothers who use cannabis nowadays? Because it is legal in some states, or it's medical. How do you, how is a mother back when our kids were younger looked at cannabis in a different way? Do you feel it's, it's okay for moms to smoke cannabis today, just like drinking a glass of wine? So this is you, Mrs. Weeman, right here. This okay. is this is all of it in a, in a, bag, of, a bag of nuts, I'm just get, for you. I get to get on my soapbox? That's it. I want to yeah. hear it. All right, if I go off on a tangent, reel me back in. <laughs> she can go I on might, a tangent. I might, that might happen. Let's All talk. Right. So, yes, we raised two kids in a house where at times there was alcohol, at times there wasn't alcohol, there was never weed. And there was a lot of discussion about don't do drugs and don't drink to excess and be a good kid and make good choices, blah, 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 blah. And I just always, always, always felt in my heart that actions speak louder than words. So I can't have these words spilling out of my mouth about how they have to be these good little humans and make good choices and don't drink and don't smoke and blah, 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 blah. But then I'm sitting in the basement getting stoned. Uh, I don't know, it just didn't work for me. So for all of those years, I just didn't do that stuff. It just, it just wasn't a thought. Um, flash forward, now the kids are finishing high school and I don't know. It started, to, like, marijuana started coming into light as some of the states were starting to go legal, and conversations about weed became more common. Um, and then Mr. Weed Man had a job who the company was very much, uh, they, they embraced weed like I never knew a company could do. And so <laughs> oftentimes <laughs> we'd get together with work people and hang out and there would be weed. So there I was all of a sudden in this situation as an adult with, you know, almost adult children. Like, oh, I guess I could try weed. You know, now that I've learned a little bit about it, what's so, what's so big about it? 
So it was trial and error in the beginning. It was a lot of like, oh, I never smoke weed anymore because I got kids or I had bad experiences in high school. I'd be so paranoid or blah, blah, blah. So it was interesting. The first few runs at it, it was a little weird. I had those feelings sometimes that, you know, you feel like, oh, my God, am I breathing? I don't know if I'm breathing right now. <laughs> yeah, those, right? And you're like, oh, shit, everybody's looking at me. You have those moments. And then you have the silly moments and everything in between. So I started to understand how I felt and how marijuana made me feel. And by that, and then recognizing all of the health aspects of it, I became quite a little weed preacher. I uh, Any opportunity I had to defend weed and um, talk about how many positive attributes it, it encompasses, it I just learned to love it more and more and more. Um, I Did just, you hear that, everyone? She loves I it, love it more and more. Right. So backing up to the whole parenting thing, I think how everybody raises their children is based on their life experiences and the person they are. So if it works for you, it's your life. Do your thing. If you don't like it, well, then don't preach about it. Just you don't have to like it, whatever. Like, you know, nobody needs to be preaching to the choir of, of moms out there about how to do what we so do. Do you, do you feel it's okay so, for moms to do it today? Because yeah, well, it that's what socially I'm socially getting more looked at as being okay to do. Okay. Because so, a couple episodes ago, I mentioned that you shouldn't do it around your kids. You shouldn't smoke or have cannabis around your kids. I agree with that. But if you want to do it and your kids are in bed, or your kids are at school or whatever, and you decide to take your one or smoke a bowl. So, would or whatever. you tell your friends don't have a drink in front of your kids? I mean, okay. So here's the thing, no, and we ru- we run into this all the time. I know, I get we grew up kids of the you know 70s and 80s, and it was all about don't do drugs. Right. Weed is the gateway drug. You're gonna be a bum on the street if you smoke weed <laughs> you'll never have a life you won't be able this to work this is your brain on drugs this is your brain on drugs <laughs> little, little shitty Friday. skillet with the, the egg sizzling <laughs> away that's your brain so you know we grew up with that that whole mentality that yes and then you have your bad high school experiences with it some of us anyway and then it's like oh yeah they really that's serious that com- they were right with that commercial i'm staying away and then you get into raising a family or going off with your career or just doing your own thing and it doesn't involve marijuana. And then all of a sudden at some point in your life it com- might come back in. And for the moms who are out there who want to have it, honestly, in the big picture of things, I don't see it. I see it as a lesser evil than alcohol um, in so many ways. And it, it for me and I think for a lot of moms, it's this like – the world is t- starting to kind of turn and recognize that it's not the bad thing that advertising's there's made. Thing, there's people we know mm-hmm. that smoke cannabis, not around their kids, but when their kids are awake, they need it because they have anxiety. It helps, mm-hmm. them, it helps them concentrate. We know a few people like mm-hmm. that that smoke weed throughout the day because they get their pens or whatever because it makes them feel better to be able to concentrate. Some people are all over the place with their thinking. Mm-hmm. Do you think when you were – our kids were – in their teens, or let's just say from let's say from the age of like, I think it's okay to smoke in front of your kids if they're two, three, four, five. They don't know what it is because yeah. you smoke cigarettes yeah. and drink wine. When you get to that 11, 12 to fifteen years old, where they're very, they're some of them are already trying it or whatever. I don't think you should do it around them. But if you do it and you and say you're helping them with schoolwork and you can't concentrate because numbers get all jumbled up, but you need cannabis to help you concentrate, I think you could be able to go up in your room and hit your pen a couple times and come back down and do schoolwork with your Mm -hmm. son or daughter. I think it's okay. I don't know if you should do it in front of them when they're at that age. Mm -hmm. I don't know because they can go to some kid's house and bust Mm -hmm. a joint out when my mom and dad said it's okay in front of their parents who might not think it's okay. Right? Yeah, but I think, I guess what I was, of course, oh, fudge, I just spilled my water. It's okay. (laughs) Sorry, people. (laughs) Anyway, um, as I was saying in a very long-winded way, uh, I was getting back to that. Um, uh, you know, to each his own. Every parent is going to do what they feel is right for their family. So it's not for me to say, is it the right thing to do? Is it good? Is it bad? But I will say um, it's still a difficult subject with with some people because they haven't necessarily embraced it. So um, if I was going to go out and advocate, I would say, yeah. That there's you know there's nothing wrong with it if you want to smoke weed when your kids aren't around and it's the evening or it's the weekend 
go for it. But I, I also have this like this um, shift that has to completely happen in my brain that I'm totally comfortable with it because it still feels a little bit taboo. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean it's it's a strange thing to to kind of see, you know. Um, and I don't know. You guys have heard my thoughts on it just now, and and um, you know, I think I think it's okay to do it in your household, um, you know, and I don't think it's a bad thing um, to do. So, but thanks for your opinion on that and what your thoughts are. And uh, I just want to let you guys all know. We smoke cannabis with our kids now, though, because they're in their 20s, and we enjoy it. <laughs> it's still kind of weird. <laughs> but we enjoy it. It's kind of weird. Uh, I brought this ca- uh, cannabis company up a lot on this podcast because they've grown so fast in Canada, and they were coming to the United States. But this is the third time I'm mentioning it, what this company is, and I would get out of your stock options if you have any with them. Canopy Growth is temporarily to close in response to the C-19. Now, we talked about last week they laid off 500 people and they closed two of their growth sections. We're like 3.1 million, 3. million acres. Uh, they have a bunch of dispensaries in Canada that are shutting down right now. They have that WEED and the TSX. I would kind of start pulling away from them, guys. Uh, we'll see what happens in the recovery of this, but it's not a company I would get into. There was some stuff I brought up in the past about them, so take a look and maybe you might want to get out. Um, yeah, I want to go and smoke, uh, a little bit of that bong again, Mrs. Weed Man. You got anything you got to say where I'm going to rip that? Uh, (laughs) I don't know. When I get really high, I really ramble on. So you just got to, you got to reel me in. Um, four booming cannabis dispensaries in Chicago, uh, one is actually the one I go to, the Herbal Care Center. Uh, they focus on medical use weed, but also sell <laughs> recreational use. You said for. <laughs> you said herbal. I did say herb, herbal. No, you didn't said I? herbal. I said herbal or herbal. <laughs> no, you said herbal. <laughs> herbal. <laughs> Sorry. And that, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is why she's on the podcast today. <laughs> uh, they received a four point eight star rating on Google. Um, I call them. They're great. They got a wide variety. Um, they always have flour for me- medical patients. Um, their staff is pretty knowledgeable. Um, I think they're getting better and better, especially when it comes to talking about terpenes and the, the cannabinoids and stuff like that. In the beginning, I think no one was really sure what it was, uh, but they're getting better. Green Gate in Chicago is number two. Uh, they, let's see, are focused on creating an environment for its clients that feel at home. Invite them and welcoming. Cool. I, I don't, the one thing about Illinois is you can't go to different medical dispensaries. If you have one, if you have your card, you can only go to the one you sign up for. So, I don't need to go recreational. I'm not going to spend that kind of money on taxes. So I won't never see Green Gate unless Illinois kind of fixes this this issue with only be able to go with to the one dispensary with medical card. Uh, Mission South Shore dispensary is tailored toward convenience with online orders available for pickup and simple, easy to pursue the website. New Med heard of them has three convenient locations. And they make it easy to become a member of their uh, patient registration. Cool. That's some of uh, Illinois' top four Chicago cannabis dispensaries. Um, here's something that that is annoying me. That I just I read a couple articles on this, and Mrs. Weedman and I were talking about this. Federal agency wants to help develop a standard THC dose for marijuana products. Yeah, we had this. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly kind of what we t- what you said when I read the article to you. Um, this is the thing we're seeing in the industry right now with different states. Uh, we saw this in Washington where the state wanted to just be able to do ten percent on um, oils and dabs and stuff like that, which was totally just shit. I'm so glad that the bill had been passed. Arizona was trying to do it with with edibles. Uh, there's a lot of states right now trying to do this and trying to make it where you can only have THC at 15, 20%. Now you have the federal government who's didn't even deem this federally legal yet. They want to make a strain that is going to be a set THC dose. And that's all we can ever use from what I'm getting from this article. It's, it's, a uh, um, bullshit. I think every state should control it. That makes me even more 
kind of fishy about the federal government even making it legal. I'd rather just the states keep the states just keep on doing what they're doing with it. I, I if the federal government's going to get involved mm-hmm. and want to control it more and more, I, I would rather them just stay out because they fuck up shit anyway too much anyway. So, um, but making a standardized THC dose. They're looking to do like a five milligram. How the fuck do you just make it five milligrams? Uh, a t- uh, uh, THC dose as the standardized measured dose. Measured like, dose. Yeah. Now, if hmm. they're just doing that as a measured dose to do as a standard, they don't make it as a law saying you can only do this. That's fine. If they're trying mm-hmm. to help the industry and people figure out what the standard doses should be mm-hmm. federally, hundred percent. But if they want to control the strain. And say this is the, all you can do. Mm-hmm. They're gonna fuck it all up. And people are just gonna go back to the black market again. Mm-hmm. It's it's finally moving forward somewhere. Do you need, do I need to reel you back in? Mm-mm. No, I'm good. All right. So, I think the federal government needs to look at each state and get the governors or the the pot czars for each state involved and have a sit down meeting with the federal government and work through this to make this federally legal. Not just the federal government. Saying, this is what we're doing. If they're not involved now, they really need to get involved and talk with each state and have meetings and, and actually assign a, a, a czar for the federal government just to start working and have a team to start working with this to get it moving federally. That's just my opinion on it. I don't know. Hopefully they don't fuck this up. So, um, How is the, the C-19 virus impacting the industry right now? And... Um, you know, we we mentioned how a lot of the states are making this essential, deemed essential, which is great. But as of March 27th, we've seen over 530,000 confirmed cases of C19 across 199 countries. <laughs> it's a lot. Mm-hmm. As the outbreak develops um, and being monitored, you know, it's going to hurt the industry, all industries, not just the cannabis industry. But if there's a recession, you know, are people going to be able to afford their medicine? You know, um, how are consumption patterns with people going to buy on a regular basis? If you can't afford it, you're out of work. Mm-hmm. You're going to look for the cheapest way to get your medicine possible, and that's going back to the black market. So it kind of scares me a little bit if people want to go to the black market again for cannabis when you can know where you're getting it from, know how mm-hmm. it's grown, know what they're putting yeah. into it. Um, you know, some people are, are using it more right now. Some people are, there is no change. And then some people are using less because of affordability because they're out of work right now. So it's mm-hmm. going to have an impact on the cannabis industry big time, I think, in the next couple of years to come until people can go back to work, start getting a regular paycheck, being able to afford, unless the industry brings the prices down a little bit right now and taxes come down a little bit. Yeah. you know, So maybe we could see a little bit of a difference there. Like Illinois did. Like Illinois did. Um... They were able to give people their cards without having to go get you got an pay extension. more money. You got an yeah. extension, which is dope. So I think that's good. But we're going to see a little bit of a hit in all industries, and I think the cannabis industry is going to take the biggest because it's not federally legal yet, and pricing is all over the place. Um, let's go globally. We haven't talked anything globally yet today. And some countries legalizing cannabis. We have Ghana, which is legalizing cannabis for medicinal industrial use, hemp, and 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 THC, which is great. Go Ghana, go. Go Ghana, go. So, another country. Um, Here's another one. Lebanon, which has always been known for their... um, Always been known for their hashish, uh, is now going to legalize uh, cannabis, and it's preparing for a vote. So, um, you know, where... these countries that where cannabis actually started or has sheesh or, you know, all these areas are looking at cannabis as a way to make better income. Uh, cannabis in the Middle East uh, could emerge as being one of the biggest worldwide in the cannabis industry. Um, and because of the climate, uh, you can grow great cannabis in that climate there. So kind of like California kind of climate, so which is great. Uh, and then... Amsterdam had to close all of its cannabis cafes, uh, which has probably been a long time since that ever happened. Um, I can't wait to go to Amsterdam one day and try 
mm-hmm. one of those uh, cannabis coffee shops is going to be kind of cool. So, uh, but once again, I would like to thank everybody for listening um, in this time right now. Appreciate you all. Uh, please throw us a DM or an email on uh, weedman420chronicles at gmail.com. Please take a listen or look at our DMs on Instagram and some videos we post on there uh, at weedman420chronicles. Um, and then you got our Twitter feed, weedman420pod. And then just hit us up anytime. And as we keep on growing this podcast, we thank everybody. And please be safe out there in this time. Make sure you're practicing social distancing. Make sure you're wearing gloves. When you go out, um, save the mask for the medical workers in the field that need it. But please be safe. And like I said in the last episode, be nice to people. Be kind. Help people out that need it when you can. If you see any elderly or disabled people that need help, you know, call somebody to help them. You're not supposed to go over there and touch them. <laughs> so, but you can call you know, uh, the police or the fire department or somebody to help these people out. As best you can. But be safe out there, everyone. We love you all. Thanks for listening. Uh, as Polly always says, smoke smart. This is Weed Man. You got to say anything before we go? Cock a doodle doo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's puff, puff, and away. Howdy.